exploring the length of the county boundary, presented by Catherine Barker and Robin Walls from the Dorset County Boundary Survey Group. In this talk, Catherine and Robin delve into the natural history of one of the oldest linear features in our man-made landscape. Join the experts as they explore the county boundary which traverses across the AONB area. Well, thank you very much indeed, Roland, for that, that very pleasant introduction, and very pleased to be part of the Current Landscapes Partnership project in this first ever exploration of this demonstrably historic length of county boundary which traverses the area of the AONB. And it was a meeting with the AOMB team around their nice big table in February 2020 that we were able to share our ideas with them uh, with reference to its acknowledgement, conservation, management, waymarking. And then, of course, this last year, things have sadly gone a little bit quiet. Dorset County Boundary Survey. Dorset, a familiar shape and one we, one we tend to take for granted, um, part of our everyday life and also our postcodes. There are a number of histories of Dorset, but none make any reference as to what bounds this distinct geographical entity. And the launch of the survey prompted the comment from a well-respected local historian who noticed, county boundary, that's surely just a few dots across a field, referring of course to the ordnance survey maps. Some dots, some field of inquiry. And one of our group, Andrew Morgan, used this as a title for a paper he published with, in the Dorset Proceedings. A field of inquiry, which, as you've learnt, has attracted a wide range of expertise. And since its launch, we've walked, walked most of the 140 plus miles. A linear feature of some kind always presents, degraded, overgrown, rarely a public footpath. Um, but we've always been given permission to walk and landowners expressing considerable interest here. Now, the first page, um, the uh, survey gives you the background to it. The Dorset County Boundary Group was launched in 2006 unique interdisciplinary research exercise bringing together archaeology, landscape and natural history in exploration of one of the oldest linear features in our man-made landscape today. The group organises a programme of field meetings along the Dorset border. June 2017 saw an archaeological investigation of a short length of the dorset Devon upline boundary bank, um, a, a, a more in a moment, and last year, 2019, well the year before last, 2019, the project attracted the interest of the Cranbourne Chase and Chalk Valley AOMB Historic Landscapes Partnership, with particular reference to these three Anglo-Saxon chartered lengths of the boundary which cut across its designated area. In complement to our natural history reports, um, John Newbold has recorded these from, from the very beginning with the Dorset Environmental Records Centre, um, the group has established an agreed recording methodology, uh, headed up by, by um, uh, Robin Walls, embracing the range of data presented. In process in this is a listing of selected boundary lengths for the Dorset County Council Heritage Environment Record. See the archaeological her record forms deposited in the Dorset History Centre. And see also the Dorset County Council Dorset Explorer website. As I say, this project is open to anybody interested. The Old the Shires of, 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 West, of Wessex, which became counties to the Norman. County is Norman French. Comte, Shire, Shire is, is Old English. Uh, and under the Normans, the role of the Shire Reeve, the sheriff, was as it were superseded by the county lieutenant, Comte Lutonon. To this day, represents the, the, the county whip to the crown, which goes straight back to William the Conqueror. Um, the Shiring of England was a major feat of government, administrative system of formidable and integrated power, notably systematic. Every shire was divided into hundreds or subunits, retaining administrative, judicial tax, and even military significance into the 19th century. Um, from Old English Shiran to Cut, the shires of the Old Kingdom of Wessex appear in the Anglo Saxon Chronicles in 80860 as units of, uh, of resistance against the Danes. Um, now, there's good reasons to suppose that all six shires may be a century or more older. We know that Kent, Sussex and Essex and indeed Devon have origins as, some, as, as independent kingdoms. And the first reference to Dorset, I'll cut this a little bit short, is when the uh, Dorset, the leader of, of Somerset men with Bishop Alstan of Sherborne and the leader of the Dorset men fought against a Danish raiding army at the mouth of the River Parrot and made great slaughter there. Yes, not a very nice period in our history. <laughs> Dorset is literally the Sita. Dawson Sita, inhabitants of D Duro or Doro country, centered on Dorchester, the Roman castor of the, the Iron Age Durotrigues, and its partner territory is Somerset, inhabitants of the summer lands, hence heresies and exploitation. Summer was administered into historical times from Ilchester, 
at the Yeovil Chester, and access to this pair of Seaton named territories, which in a sense of name, a term which implies a Britonic pre-Saxon origin, from the north up the River Parrot and the south up the River Froom. The bishopric I've got Sherborne in 705 was to be cited on the border. And until 1566, Dorset and Sher Somerset sh uh, shared the same county sheriff, interesting enough. Thus it is the county of Dorset County boundary represents many miles of, of, of linear pre-19th pre century landscape feature of considerable topographical, archaeological and botanical significance. Um, now I invited Professor uh, James Campbell, of, of Professor of Anglo-Saxon History at Oxford, to give our, our first keynote lecture uh, of the first day school we organised, and he could hardly have been more encouraging. Uh, we then given an organised number of day schools and, and attracting well uh, respected speakers. It may sound odd, James Campbell observed, but it's true. Dorset is older as a unit of administration and allegiance than any state in Europe. That most of the explanations are of boundaries already there in 1086, the Doomsday Book, and which therefore for centuries acquired an almost geological stability. To study the history of boundaries, boundaries such of a shire such as Dorset is find, to find the means to explore a very ancient organisation and a powerfully interesting one. So we could hardly have had a better launch of the project. There's a basic school at, uh, at Athos on the left hand side, which you can see there. We're very familiar with those kind of outlines, and which immediately draws attention to the area of the AONB, which I've drawn here on the right. So many studies are county based. It's a rare privilege to undertake a study of a territory whose borders embrace, well, ignore, as it were, um, the boundaries of historic shires which run through it. Borders and borderlands which have been in existence for at least 1200 years, serving administrative, legal, and military boundaries. As you can see, um, the, the, the long established boundary is like a long established boundary is likely to have been managed as linear woodland uh, with uh, uh, organized points of entry in that earlier insecure world. They were kept clear. Borderlands which traverses an area registered as outside common law as a chase. We've all just had that. Rights held by a high status non royal. Right. Oxford, 1886. Yes, there have been some changes. Uh, we, some of us remember 1974, Bournemouth and Poole in this area here. And here we have an enclave, a Somerset enclave around the parish of Holwell, uh, which was held by the Royal Manor of Millbourne Port. So it made sense then to have the two, the two Somerset connections here. We've walked that and it's a very interesting boundary in its own case. Similarly with Charles Stock here, which was held by the Abbey of Cern. That, that was then to be rationalised, if you like, a, a little bit later on. Now, in this area, the first reference to the shires and shiremen is presented in the laws of King Ina of Wessex, um, dating to the 680s, and which coincides with the later career of Aldhelm, first West Saxon Bishop of Sherborne, cited here on this salient. And it was a few years earlier in 1664 at the Synod of Whitby, they voted in favour of the Roman Church, as distinct from the Western Irish so-called Celtic Church, the Pope appointed Theodore as uh, Archbishop of Canterbury, who introduced, who reintroduced the Roman style administrative system based on territorial bishoprics, complemented by Roman literacy and Roman law. In the Celtic, of course, the appointment of bishops and so on was based on the tribal. Aldhelm left the Western world and signed up with the Roman order at the Canterbury School. The Roman Church was, as it we shall see, uh, as it were, to inherit aspects of the secular world, structured secular rule of the old Roman world. So what prompted this boundary survey? It was research on the early Episcopal estate of Sherborne, uh, which drew attention to the Charter of 774, which granted a land landlord bishopric, uh, a, a, a coastal mancio, a trading estate, on the west bank of the River Lim, where it runs into the sea, for salt pan, essential substance, of course, and, and, and yielding plenty of revenue. It was Harold Fox's um, map of the uh, 1970 paper on from the Devonshire Transactions, which presents a map of the boundary recital of the 938 charter of the Glastonbury held estate of Upline Parish in Devon, and the boundary of which 
run skirts round this wedge of land on the west bank of the Lim where it runs into the sea. I've shaded it in. I couldn't think why nobody had ever noticed that before. And it was published in one of the early Oxford British Archaeological Reports. The, 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 the county boundary here running straight across this, this deep valley, which in itself attracts attention from any, any historical geographer. I then here drew a rather more a clearer map, as you like, of the boundary references we find from this, uh, this, 930, this estate recorded in 938. Uh, a lookout post, a, a lookout hill, watch snapper, a, a, a willow moor or mere, a, a willow laku, a water source. But jumping off the map here is um, the wagon, waygate, wagon gate, and where builders, where boldest storm, a where building warehouse, There's still a place there called warehouse, on the old road up from the harbour, a, a, a point here of, of, of entry. Then drawing attention here is Shire Lane. Summer seat is, is summer grazing, it's not Walker County. And then the Landshire Ash, the boundary runs down onto the Salt Ford. Landshire Croft, land border, land, land division of Landshire. Shire Lane, Shire Lane, down to the river at Salt, the Salt Ford, where we imagine the wagons with salt, the sacks of salt that were coming up from the, from the, from the coast. Um, now I can't see because you're in it here, but this was Lyme Abbas on the west bank. Uh, the east bank was Lyme Regis, uh, formerly held by the Crown. And of course, after the dissolution, the whole lot was to become Lyme Regis. And the whole of the hinterland up Lyme and Conway held by Glastonbury. Um, say Lyme Abbas has, has long gone, and of course the, the, the salt panning estates have long gone to a coastal erosion as well. Now we have persuasive uh, reason for thinking this estate was already in existence by uh, by the 680s, by, by the rule of King Ina and Aldhelm First Bishop. In short, a recent reading of a lengthy complex Latin poetic work by Aldhelm presents us what we read as a, a, a bardic declaration of the making of this um, coastal estate. On returning from a mission to the Britain from the Brit from, from the, to the Britons of Dumnonia, Devon, on reaching the edge of Devon, Usque Domnoniam, he was to ensure to survive a dramatic day of judgment style storm, surviving the furies of the Dumnonians, in the creation of a formal Roman style border in the discreman duobus, in the cutting in two of this steep hillside estate at Portus Limina. Published and, and very well reviewed. Um, it also attracts attention here to all terms reference to the likening of the duty of prayer to the payment of the Vectigalia, the old Roman road tax on the path through life. Gate names we find presented along the county boundary, along this length and indeed on other lengths, bringing to mind those portoria established along the estate boundaries of 7th century Merovingian Gaul on the other side of the channel. The, his dedication to his helmet hostage we read as Old English Helm Gilsel, first West Saxon abbot of Glastonbury. Uh, Shelburne estate's been cut out of Glastonbury Hill land, wearing a helmet come mica shaped estate. And Helm was a standing, cryptically standing surety along not just the Dorset Devon border, um, but the, uh, what we may uh, I suggest was the bishopric as a whole. Now the pictures are here, so I just see here. Um, I can't actually see the other side of this map, but never mind. Um, a pair of CETA designated um, 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 territories, as I've already uh, um, mentioned, the Britonic connotation here. Um, and we have two other early Glastonbury held estates at Wood Yates and Biddlesgate along the area. Uh, boundary, of course, which cuts right across the area of the um, AONB. In short, the making of a Roman style bishopric. And it was a century later, when relations with Dumnonia were once again to deteriorate, that the Sherborne Man Seer was registered by law, Roman law, by charter. In short, we may posit that the boundaries of the bishopric runs with those of the Shire. Now, we can't actually prove that. Uh, but there is a persuasive case uh, in, in, in the reading of this, this bardic declaration. And it's, it's a wonderful, it's an amazing piece of writing. It's quite clear that all can witness this storm at first hand. The description of the, the ripping up of trees, the collapse of salt panning, um, I, I think it's, 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 not, it's not made up. 
And the other interesting thing is, of course, that he uses the word restore the tempestas. And we know for a fact um, that, that, that the tempestas is also a Latin term for pandemic disease, plague. John Bermadicott wrote a whole um, book on the, the end of antiquity and the great pandemic of 681 to 684, which will kind of coincide with Helen Wills' Abbacy at Glastonbury. So these things fit together in, in the most, uh, most extraordinary way. And it, uh, we, are so, we are so fortunate. And of course, the other thing about river person names is, of course, the River Avon uh, bounds of the bishopric to the north and the River Avon to the south. Well, Affle, Avon, Affle is just Welsh for river. So the bounds run from river to river, from north coast to south coast, which again is one of those rather uh, 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 nice, um, nice place naming. Um, right, next one. So, what does this look like on the ground? Uh, this is now, this which takes us on, literally on the ground. Now, we're going to very hard. Now, this is actually a portrait in white, but we'll try not to take too long. Now, Shire Lane runs along. Uh, northerly direction from the, the road along the, uh, the, the, the high ground from to um, Seaton. And the county boundary, the Devon Dorset county boundary, runs down the middle of the road. That is a, 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 a stated fact. So the boundary bank this side is Devon, and the boundary bank that side is Dorset. And they pre present quite another different um, um, botany, which is enough, again, which is now all safely recorded. The uh, a, a wide, a very wide uh, a, a double bank and ditch or Myra Rootway runs all the way down to the coast. We've also walked that, and that is massively overgrown and is all but completely inaccessible. And again, produces a very interesting um, botany of trees. Now, proceeding to the end of Charlotte Lane, which is yes, metalled, there's a big car park here, and then you have to walk. Now, the boundary on the this side, the Devon side, has clearly been ploughed out, has disappeared. We're now presented with a, a single massive boundary bank here. This is John Newbold, a botanist and co-founder of the group. He's then right making notes for, 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 for Dawson Environmental Records Centre. This was taken some years ago, uh, and which presents a huge land shire, which, uh, ash stool, which could actually be the land shire ash recorded in the uh, upline charter. It's, you can see the scale of this, and, and Oliver Rackham, who joined us uh, later, uh, I'll talk a bit more about this later, uh, couldn't get over the scale of, uh, of this tree and some of the other things going down here. Now, in 2017, Luke Jenkins, I think you maybe know from Johnny Monteith, um, on the university, undertook a small excavation across the end here. Um, and indeed, we demonstrated the clear double structure. Um, but uh, as I say, the, the dating, it was, it was a lot of movement and damage and so on, and, and dating was, was, was not easy on, on this particular uh, level, but we'll, 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 we'll keep, keep hoping on that one. In short, in other words, this boundary was deliberately created uh, as, a, as a, a perambulation, as a procession around, around this new uh, ecclesiastical estate. Well, let's go on down the slope and see what we see. Heavily overgrown, here it is running down this one side of this huge boundary bank running down, this is somebody's garden shed, I think, Again, we had her permission to, to, to walk along this, of course, it's private ground. Um, I think there's a massive yew tree. Again, it's, it's extraordinary veteran trees running down here and the remains of, of, of the routeway. Running down into Land Shire Croft, launching Croft of today, a private road. You can no longer possess this, <laughs> as you know. And in fact, as you'll see here on the side here, it's actually a dead end Land Shire Road. Now, today's road. Now, next time you drive down, next time you drive down into Lyme Regis, or Lyme Regis now, um, you will be crossing a boundary, a border, which has been in existence for over 1300 years. That's quite a thought. It presents itself today as a, a change in the wall structure on here between two property boundaries, two houses, as does indeed the garden for that one, the garden for this one. This side, appropriately, the road changes colour. You can see that, can't you, where it's maintained by Devon on one side and Dorset on the other. And appropriately enough, the county boundary sign sits on this tall bank, this rough, huge bank here, well, degraded but grown, which represents the, the Mansio boundary. And it runs as a double bank and, and ditch route way down to, all the way down to the, the uh, Salt Fort. Uh, which was probably a routeway until relatively recent times, obviously serving the, the salt fort. Um, but again, we've also walked all that, and that is now carefully recorded. So 
<laughs> this it was this in fact a length of the boundary which prompted um uh, assembling uh, um my five yes um prog with, with um a progress of methodology for recording and classifying boundaries lime as a type site that was written up kindly for us by robin walls of broadening and i won't ask i won't read this through now but it's it's a, a very interesting introduction development of the methodology non boundary classification boundary of conservation importance um and what is interesting in fact is this is represents part of one of our herkological record forms meter by meter a record of what we find um a paper he wrote on the recording the county boundary and latter day nearest one again this is all in the dorset proceeding so 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 um, do, do enjoy it I coined the word herkology for the study of boundaries because there doesn't seem to be one. Um, herkos is the Greek word for border, an edge, a limit. Um, and of course, it's used in geological terms, herkotectonic plates, which divide underneath geology. Um, so this is a herkological record form HRF. They are deposited as completed by Robin um, in the Dorset History Centre. So who looks after this demonstrably historic length of boundary? I've given papers in East Devon and West Dorset, and people look at each other. The area of Devon runs up to the boundary and stops. Dorset runs up to the boundary and stops. Interesting. It was a year or so after I launched the project that I was uh, invited um, to pick up a, 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 a sorry, it's gone back again. Um, the AOMB, um, a short contract, to write up a report on the historic deer parks of their area. And of course, it jumped off the map. Actually, I can't see it again. The, the paper, the, 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 the pictures are the uh, uh, faces are in the way. Uh, embracing a small corner of Somerset, Wiltshire, Dorset, and Hampshire. And the boundary runs straight across to this designated area. Um, it's, 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 it, it, yes, interesting. The potential here is very considerable. Right, where are we going? Now, time is not the only uh, boundary, uh, not the only county boundary to run with, with an estate, uh, an estate boundary, Uplime AD 938. Uh, the ones with asterisk we have walked, and there's always, as I say, a feature of some kind. Uh, we know by definition, therefore, these lengths were already in existence by these dates, although we don't know how far back they go. Maybe one day we will. Um, the area AOMB, we have Chalk, boundary of Chalk, Hampshire, 955. Handley, 956, only a year apart. There's something going on here, I think. Dameron and Wiltshire, 944. And um, Graham Hoddinot of the group has written up a paper on this length in the Dorset Proceedings, and Andrew Morgan on this length in the Dorset Proceedings. Um, this uh, actually caption is slightly out of date. Uh, boundary recording methodology now established has a wide relevance to Dorset and other county Anglo-Saxon charter boundaries first surveyed by G.B. Grant in the 1930s. Landscape studies have seen major developments since this time and a revisit and resurvey is suggested. Uh, members of the group were invited to Winchester University last autumn, 2014, so this goes back a bit, to talk about mapping Anglo-Saxon charters project uh, to involve here local communities. Although it's gone quiet, we haven't heard any more since then, but the potential is, is, is clearly, uh, clearly marked. Anyway, so we're going to concentrate on this area here. Right, next one. Where's my, where's my time? Yeah, it was uh, Linda, Linda Nunn um, uh, very kindly invited me to mount an exhibition of our work on the AOMB area at the Chalk Valley History uh, Festival uh, ex ex exhibition. Uh, at the summer festival in 2019 and i assembled here you can see um, the our maps our papers uh, our published reports in here and some of these these photographs i will be showing now you recognize that map probably you'll see that map you recognize that one there which i've just drawn it was actually one of the hottest days of the summer when i took my thermometer it actually uh, it, it went about 90 degrees fahrenheit but i, I I'm, I'm digressing here um but it attracted a, a, a lot of interest um Further to this, we were intending to run a, a, another day school to bring all this together, a series of us as speakers and so on. But of course, we ran into a tempest, a, a pandemic plague. And so um, it, it, it has gone rather, rather quietly. 
Andrew Morgan kindly took this photograph, uh, joined us all, and kindly took this photograph. It's a nice picture, isn't it? I will. It's a very successful festival, which of course was postponed this year uh, for reasons well, we can all understand why. Now, the, the designation of this main length at nine, Shear Lane, Lanshire Croft, Lang, Langshire, Ashshire Lane, as again suggests a, a, a made length, which suggests their origins in the shiring of the later seventh century, coincident with the terms of office of both Ena and Alton. Lanshire Lane uh, follows the, the army path, the hero path, of course, Blackmore, formerly an open tract of land, uh, which is uh, suggestive, a dead straight tract of road, quite dangerous actually, well surfaced. And again, of course, the, along the Shire Rack, the Shire Reach, which also runs, of course, from the west of, of Widgets, and is, it is a part of the A and B. Shire Reach, Shire, Shire, Shire. Interesting, uh, these particular Shire names here along, along these, along these arguably made, made links. Now, land challenge of store, of course, is a very striking, quite, is a very striking one. Um, this is Christopher Taylor's book of a map or a book of on Dorset. He doesn't mention the boundary, but that's why straight across, cutting across this form of form open trapped of common. You can see how it's cut here um, uh, in this proposal. And the hero path is an army path. This was this was a, a form of creation. Um, who knows? Again, when it was created, it's first recorded in 956. It could go back. We we'll, could go back to the later seventh century. Right, let's let's think let's focus on the yes, the A O N E F. The designated area books of it here are in green, you can just see, and the sort of yellowish I've I've sketched in the county boundary, shire boundary which, which crosses it. Designated area in green. Pasted here boundary markers presented along the Shire County boundary of three 10th century charters, those relating to the estates of Chalk, Wiltshire, Handley, Dorset, Dammerham and Martin in Hampshire. In um, Ek, it, oh gosh, is this view? Put, put, put away. Um, in 944 6, Edmund to Athlete's Queen, Dan and Martin for life with reversion to Glastonbury, please echo the state. Um, King, 955, King Yantui to the nuns of Wilton, off of land at Chalk, that's another ecclesiastical manner. 956, uh, Yantui to the Minister of Shaftesbury, Grass of Lands at Handley, Dorset. So these ecclesiastical manners across, as I say, here. Um, uh, right. Okay. Now, interestingly enough, what we've got here further to the A, I've got my light on, it's quite dark in here. That's better. Uh, if I can see my, I can see my text text. Oh, hang on. It doesn't have to what I do here. Let's go back. Sorry. Let's go back. Yes, and we can actually, as it were, uh, walk with a, a, a we could actually walk with a, a, a ten, an extensive land surveyor, Biddlesgate. Oh, I like here. Sorry, I still just see it. Sorry, I like Biddlesgate um, uh, here, running from here. Biddlesgate. Let's get that off map. Um, along uh, to a middle bit bit Mears Mears Pond, along the ridge to Stonehill Gate, up yet. Okay, along the dike, ditch, dike to Woodyates. This is Bockley Dike, this prehistoric landscape, uh, landscape feature that's prominent, which is going to go back to the Bronze Age, uh, was certainly reinforced in Roman times, along to Woodyates. Uh, uh, and then we're running west from Woodyates along the Shire Reach, Little Oak Lee, this will be Wood, Shermel Gate, Pigsty Ridge, Beaker Seat. Um, Tinkley Bottom, Tilukli, which is now the area in the office, and then on to, to Shaftesbury here. Um, as I say, the designated area I think probably relates to the what is seen as the end of, of the, the ancient monument of, of Bockley Dyke. Further to this, we would suggest to take the length of the Dorset County boundary here in two lengths, one from here up to Woodyates, and then Woodyates west to, to, to Tinkley Bottom. Um, and to serve as our type site. Um, and this one here to serve as our type site for waymarking and so on. We're already in touch here with, with, with the uh, local access form. And of course, this is already a public footpath. Now, drawing to attention here, of course, is our point uh, points of entry, not least Woodgate, which on the charter is Widayat, wide gate. So it may have been wood, but it's wide. Um, and uh, uh, it's interesting because, in fact, this is a former Glastonbury Hill state, which presents a chapel site. 
um, a place to pause, rest overnight, say a prayer for a safe onward journey in a very insecure world. Um, the 10th century references say it's to Widayat, but it could be a wood gate, I think it's a wide gate um, across the old Roman road. Distinctive funnel entrance is presented by Bockley Dyke. Now let's let's go back and have a look at Biddle's Gate. Um, Biddle's Gate, uh, next one, next slide, yes. Back I go to Biddle's Gate. The path that goes on down to the Priest Gate here, which also by the 9th, 8th, 16th century, is the Chatters, Chatters Gate. Cheaters Gate? Uh, who knows? Very distinctive uh, field pattern here, running along the ridge down to uh, Biddle's Gate, which is B. Caliate on the Charter. Now they read that the dictionary reads that as by way of toll, the slope gate. It is quite a steep slope here. I suggest we could even read this as by way of the toll gate. Toll yet. The jury, I think, will remain up. Cloud out of existence is a historic barrier here. There it is, completely disappeared. There are two massive yew tree stools on either side of the boundary, which presumably are evergreen markers. That's that is not coincidence, surely. And from there we go up. Uh, Bullsbury Wood, Martin, Khmeratun, a boundary name, Khmeratun, Mears Pond, Arpiat, which is the Stonehill Gate of today. So another point of entry. Italiate is, is suggestive, but as I say, how you read place names in that context and what, of course, is committed to the writing. Now, running along the ridge, we go up to uh, this is here on this is Mears Pond, the useful washing place, geologically quite interesting, of course. Um, and this is the Mearsman's map. Now, Chris, uh, uh, John Charles, one of our uh, members, worked for many years in the Ordnance Survey and has ready access to some of the historic maps. These Mearsman's maps, the very first uh, scaled all maps by the Ordnance Survey. Sorry, Mears Pond is here, the crossing place is dotted in here. And there's details about the bank and the ditch, a formal feature. Now, people drop things into mirrors, into ponds, and I, I, that's one of us here. <laughs> and I think it's, it's largely drained now, but that certainly is, it invites further investigation. Further along, oh, sorry, next one, further along, oh, we're going back to the right thing away. <laughs> further along the ridge, running along the ridge here, uh, again, oh, Prominent feature, these are uh, these trees, again completely unmanaged and heavily overgrown, but very, very distinctive. That was there. And again, example of hazel coppicing running along here on this length. Going along, I think that's probably the field maple. There's remains along here of hurdling and woodland management. That's a massive tree stool. Robin may tell us what that is, I'm sure he knows. Uh, but what intrigues me is the point at which the southern end of Bockley Dyke, this huge prehistoric Roman repaired uh, massive earthwork, joins up as it were with the county boundary, with the Shire, the Shire boundary bank. It's heavily overgrown, this is one of our group here, and this is an area which invents uh, geophysics, LIDAR, just simply looking because you know it, it again i mean in the early accounts well the end of bobby dyke was, was bordered within with massively thick impenetrable woodland well now that's clearly not the case so it is something which which does it, it very carefully it invite further inspection um Mearsman's pond along the ridge um as i say and then we've got the view here Looking down from Blagden Hill, which is now, of course, this is open country. There's there's the Bockley Dyke, which is, of course, a, a, a designated ancient monument, so it's looked after. And that's a group of us. You see how big the bank is here, with some growth along the top. Um, as it approaches Wood Yates, where the Roman road and the modern main road comes through, uh, which I like to think of as a wider gap, a wide gate. But as I say, the jury remains out of that one. Now, a focus of attention is um, on the area west of Woodgate's lying along here. We've got um, now, where's, my, where's my, my pointer? Come on, pointer, work on pieces. I think I've lost my pointer, my cursor. I can't help. Uh, hang on. Yes, there it is. Here. here is Bockley Dyke. There is the funnel entrance. There is the Roman road and the modern road today. Um, and the Bockley Dyke continues here, the massive bank and ditch and goes on and then, yes, it continues. 
this this spur cobbly cobbler uh, clearing could well be later. I mean, I, again, we don't know its origins, but that does suggest that that's a later addition at some time. Again, further research might help on that one. Um, running on down here, the massive double bank and ditch runs on down uh, to the point where the Bower Chalk Road runs up and joins the road up from Handley. Um, there's a massive uh, white beam stool here, which is a marker tree, which Oliver Rackham was amazed about, the biggest he'd ever seen. To the car park, at Garston Wood, Pribdean. Pribdean is Privet Valley. Dean Dinu is in a valley. Garston Wood. Well, this is an interesting irony here because Garston is Old English Garston, which means a paddock, a pasture, an open space. And here we uh, 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 suggest that we've got um, a, a pulling in place um, for drovers, merchants, traders, as it were, the car park of the, of, of the long lost world. Uh, we forget how busy these these drove routes once were. Of course, they were becoming a, a, a steam power. These heavy duty things, um, cattle trucks and so on, were moved by rail. Uh, but this is long before that date. And then running along here, Sessions Gate, which is not recorded in the charter, Salisbury Camp, Little Britain Camp, Shamal Gate, which will focus our interest here. Um, now let's get on next one. That's a white beam stool. Uh, again, you see the rest of the heavy grown, uh, massive, massive stool in, in a pretty desperate state. I gather because the leaves are, 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 are white on the understanding. It's such a, John Newell says it was a marker tree. Ordnance survey map, again, which uh, Charles has produced. There's, there's Garston Wood, Pribdean Wood. Now, the white beam is, is here. Here's the lane running up, the road running up from Bower Chalk. And this is where the, uh, the length we would like to say to not. It's already a public footpath, Shire designated length, um, which in fact uh, we could waymark, conserve, and so on. It's now pretty heavily overgrown. Now, on the, the footpath on the other side of the road, this is the road up from Bower Chalk. Uh, this is the footpath up from Cobb. It's still a public footpath up here, but the footpath runs beside, look at the width of this, of this boundary. Is this the end of Broccoli Dyke? I mean, we, nobody knows, basically. That, it, it's hugely wide, completely overgrown, completely overgrown here. Width of this is 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 is, is striking. Now, I'm hard enough. We wrote a paper on this length, uh, length as they call a map. We begin to recognise some of these points. The little oak knee, oak trees, Missilby Camp, this big enclosure, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Um, the trough. Shown gate in a moment, um, the pigsty ridge, uh, uh, the, there's a, a, a header path, an army path crossing here, and Beacon Seat, there's still a uh, Beacon Settle, there's still a settlement site here. Um, and the, this area is much less as it well defined. It's now Forestry Commission and it's uh, common conifers and, and, and it's a very, very different atmosphere. And this skirts round the walled garden of the Rushmore estate. Now, when, when did that happen? It was, it's been there for, some, for, for several centuries. Um, and then running down to um, Tillock's Lee, um, Tinkley Bottom, where the, the AOMB office is now. Um, right. Running a little bit, a few yards up, uh, up Bank Boundary Bank, uh, up from the top road, is a massive ash tree, an uh, ash stool, another ash stool on an old boundary. Interesting that. Drawing attention to, of course, the fact that the, 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 the ash was sacred to the pagan god Woden, Odin, god of war, of defense. Of course, he gives his name to Wonsdyke, Woden's Dyke, which is that great prehistoric barrier bank, bank running across the heart, northern part of Wiltshire. And as again, Oliver Rackham said, we, we can't date it, but of course, if you pull out the tree, it will preserve, it, it'll prolong its life. And it may be, I mean, carbon-14 dating would have been laughed at about a generation or two ago. But it may be the next generation, somebody will, will have a, te a technique that wish we could drill down into the rootstock here, pull up a sample, and discover when this tree first put down its first root. And I think we may well be in for some surprising, some surprises. This will be camp. This large, almost horseshoe-shaped enclosure. The Mitchell Bizig, big enclosure on the, the chartered map. Its purpose not known. It's not particularly defensive. Um, I'm going to suggest it was used by, by drovers, assembling of, of livestock. 
in what was formerly an open tract of country on the Dorset side, interesting enough. Again, uh, uh, geophysics, LIDAR, and indeed archaeological investigation could be would be invited here, I think. We, we, we just know what this was for. Indeed, when it was finally abandoned is also, of course, of, of relevant here. As you see how it's completely overgrown, there's nothing very ancient here. It's just heavily overgrown. But of course, it's wonderful for wild birds and, and livestock. So, <laughs> now, further along, again, we find more coppice, hazel coppicing. How's my time going? Hazel coppicing, a practice, um, say, which 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 Caesar mentioned it. His 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 Gallic in his De Bello Gallic Co. His on the Gallic Wars, um, now part of Belgium, which I think may, I may have mentioned before. Um, they cut the tops of saplings and slowed down the the, 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 the Roman cavalry. Um, planted briars and made them so sharp they couldn't actually pass through. As I say, I've often wondered whether, in fact, um, we've had haste coppicing along the line of Botany Dyke. Um, clearly, it was a, 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 a practice, you know, well, well practiced in, in Northern Europe. There was one hurdler we met, fell in step with, um, uh, on, 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 just below Shermel Gate, um, and he said, yes, well, once there were many of us, but obviously this is a practice which, which is more or less now gone. And that's in fact the photograph you use on, on, on the on the on the slide, isn't it? On the on the poster. Well, why why does it cross this area? Why why is it running across? Well, again, we don't really know. It's designated a shire, rich and narrow pathway. It was never metal, never turned into a road and into into a into a, into a, a road, um, unlike Lion Shire Lane, or indeed parts of Lion Shire Lane in, in Lion Regis. Um, but it's 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 it, it again poses interesting questions. We don't, we don't know. We don't, in short, know. Now, John Charles, uh, the, this is the, the Shermel, this is the Meersman's map, the old, the uh, OS Meersman's map of the Shermel Gate point of entry. You see the convergence of routes here, the boundary, and the number of buildings here. Now, going moving on, this was a map drawn by again by my friend um, Hoddinock. And what is interesting is we have, a, a, well, we know uh, that this side was held by where Winton, the, the, the nunnery, Wilton Abbey, a 10th century charter. But in the, by 1086, a high status Norman held the manor of Highfield Bavent, which gave a narrow access to Shone Gate, which jumps off the map. Although we are given to understand that Wilton still had some rights which goes too far to suggest the importance of this point of entry. Drovers, traders, merchants, once a busy crossing, and the revenues perhaps that were connected at this gateway? Well, we probably, well, again, we might not know. John Charles compared with this, composed this very nice montage. There's a convergence of routes coming down from the north. There's still a building here. There it is, still a building here. The road, the surface road up, handy it stops there's no road there's no that stops that's the end of, of, of the surface road down the deep valley at a shovel gate um this convergence is is is, is very very striking i think john has drawn the dots on the map as to where the boundary runs across here um now if, what is interesting is in the in the in the place name dictionary this is given as as shire mill sorry i just, oh no what's happened here forgive me ah no i lost my I lost my slide Given a Shire Mill, that's better, isn't it? Let's go back one, shall we? Um, that one. Um, back one. That one. That one. I've got there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that problem. Um, Shire Mill, um, as Graham said, there's absolutely no evidence for, for, for a mill site here at all. Um, and I think I, I'm, I'm in favour of Old English Mail, a wayside cross, a place near uh, 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 the signposts of an earlier world. Two ecclesiastical states meeting here, secular role of the Roman church, perhaps as a chapel site here, like there was at Woodyates, water, stock, say a prayer, and in an insecure world, this would be an area kept free of trees. Catherine, can I just interject briefly? Um, yeah. On um, your slide, if you can click on, um, is it the top left of your current slide? Uh, if yes. You click on resume slideshow, ah. that'll bring us back to the presentation view. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Thanks. You're very kind. Thank you so much for your help. Sorry for um, interrupting. <laughs> um, as I say, I play, uh, now, 
And in an insecure world, as I say, the, the area above this gate would be kept free of trees. We know the later Turnpike Act, it was illegal to plant trees along roads, uh, 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 highwaymen, cattle, rustling, and so on. Um, this is a site which certainly invites LIDAR geophysics and in, indeed maybe archaeology. Um, there may well be a, a chapel site here. There may even be the, the cross of the, the, the base of this big wayside cross. Eamon Duffy's book on the stripping of the altars, which you probably haven't read, um, was, was, was the most extraordinary volume. Uh, the, 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 the destruction after the Reformation of these wayside monuments uh, was almost as an industrial scale. And look, they were ripped down, they were popish and rubbish. There was also stories that there was gold buried underneath them. Well, they were probably meeting places where people were there left baggages for collection. I don't think there's any evidence that there was gold uh, buried underneath these, these wayside crosses. But there again, this is, this is an interesting site, the Shire, the, the, the Shire wayside cross on these two ecclesiastical estates. And then the Norman Lord did, did quite well, I suspect, on, on, on this length. Now, Robin Walls, as I say, has uh, recorded with Wolf the Explorer. Now, Sessions Gate, and I see the Shirmal Gate is here. You see, even today, the convergence of routes here, although the road stops, is very, very striking. Back to the so called porch, the big enclosure, Mitch Kilberry. But Sessions Gate, which is another gate name, um, but probably a personal name, yeah, but is not mentioned in the charter, has no convergence evident. It's 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 more recent by definition. I think it's it's, it's a more, more more recent one. There is, in short, room for a lot of potential for, for further research here, and it was um, Rachel and Roland and Charlotte who proposed a loop walk from Garston Wood, the open paddock, not an ancient forest, ancient woodland. Um, along here, Port Sessions Gate, past Mistleberry, Shermore Gate, Foxbury League, back through a place called Newtown. Bob Morris Beresford published a book called Newtown in the Middle Ages some years ago, and the 13th century saw many, many new town plantations, land owners, uh, fixed rents, revenues, and so on. And the, the impression is here, this is built perhaps in relation to, to cross-border trading movement, um, quite striking. But we are presented here with something which has clearly failed. Uh, this new town never, never took off. It's recorded on the early, on the early maps, uh, just never further developed. And again, that is very much, I think, a rich area of further work. Now we'll conclude. My gosh, I'm getting on too. <laughs> we'll conclude with a visit by Oliver Rackham. So Oliver Rackham, the how do you no longer with it? He's the authority on 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 on. Um, veteran trees, uh, countryside. And John Newbold very kindly uh, wrote up this, this note. Uh, Catherine Bach, I, well, perhaps I can read some of it for you, but you'll recognize some of these already. There's the white beam. There's the land Shire Act. We walked with him um, the, the boundary, the um, um, Pentridge Power, Power Chalk and Lime. Catherine Bach invited Professor Rackham to walk with us, members of a group, two lengths of the county boundary, coinciding with two 10th century boundary charters, Six for Lee Handley, 956, and Upline, 938. The leading authority on the natural history of the British landscape, its woods, trees, and hedgerows, Racker makes particular reference to earlier written sources. Um, he was endlessly making notes, as he says here. Our first visit, nearly 11 years ago, was to see the large coppice, white beam coppice, slightly associated, white beam stool, slightly east of the Sex Lee Handley border. Oliver suggested that the county boundary runs on the wine wood bank, yet yeah, the, the, the new woodland, a relic of earlier woodland perhaps. It may represent a, con a con continuation of Bockley Dyke. Uh, he commented that the coppice floor was the largest white beam he had ever seen. He had hitherto not noticed county boundaries. His survey of trees had simply not looked at these. It, it's fascinating. So it had, had, had completely escaped his attention. Um, Right. Uh, uh, earlier visit here had been the school was much harder to see being shrouded by bracken and chart uh, and, and climbers so clearly had been cleared. Bower chalk, there's is it an oak root ball, right? We found that short tap root. Um we also suggested the wood bank in Dean um, uh, bank. 
upon as the relic of former woodlands at the Woodbank, and beside the coppice hazel shoots, KB read out the words of Julius Caesar about the nerve of the EU fortified their hedges uh, to, to uh, impede the Roman cavalry. Um, the horseshoe shaped for the Mitchell Burr, or 956, what is now Mitchell Wood of unknown significance. Um, he endorsed the view of the group that the earthwork had never been finished. Well, that is also possible, of course. It is also possible it's not finished. There we are, Missile. I've got two of our members here with that. It's Andrew Morgan and Graham Hoddinott. Ridge of the Fort Boundary Bank, two metres above the bottom of the ditch. Mr. of Ransoms uh, in the damp areas of the wood, with many bluebells. Then the line reaches up Rhine, uh, up Rhine uh, Parish. The best research link for the county boundary. Thank you very much. Um, here we are, 774 Shelburne Estate at Lyme Regis, Dorkland Shire Lane. Um, we've got Lady Minnie Churchill at Warehouse, Warehouse, uh, offered us tea and biscuits, which was lovely. And here was Oliver putting his tape measure around this huge ash storm. Uh, Lanshire ash, seen from the photo of its size. The interesting learn from Oliver that there is as yet no accurate way of dating very old refugee stores. I think maybe for some surprises. A maple further on towards the coast, which we look uh, we, we, we picture here. Um, double bank, extended down to the old black dog. Um, so yes, again, it was what I have more or less said in uh, my earlier talk. Um, and, and, and that really, and we finished up with it, uh, perhaps well, with, with a nice uh, couple of coffee, I seem to remember. Well, basically, that concludes my talk, because time is going on, I mustn't go on too long. <laughs> But as I say, it's a very this is a very rich area, and and, and certainly invites um, further further research um, and, and and so on. Thank you to Catherine Barker and Robin Walls for presenting this talk as part of the Spring Talk series, hosted by the Chase and Chalk Landscape Partnership Scheme. Thank you to our partners and funders for this talk. The Chase and Chalk Landscape Partnership is a group of organisations working together to protect and enhance the special landscape of Cranbourne Chase and the Chalk Valley. With Cranbourne Chase AONB as the lead partner, and with support from the National Lottery Heritage Fund, this five-year partnership is working with local communities to better connect people with the landscape. For more information, please visit www.cranbournechase.org.uk.